imagine having to spend 10,000 or 100,000 US it's a big money to marry a, a foreigner or for a foreigner to marry a Chinese person I mean that's crazy amount of money and imagine if your parents asked me to fork out 20 or 30 or 40,000 US to marry you <laughs> I don't think that would make the Philippines an attractive place <laughs> do you I don't think so <laughs> And yet, you know, this is what I saw the Chinese women are expecting, like a hundred thousand US for, you know, before they would even entertain a husband. And they they want also like at least a few houses in Beijing. I mean they're even specifying where they want the houses. And they want like five cars. I don't know why they need five cars, but they somehow all want five cars. So this is the high expectations of Chinese women and putting that pressure on Chinese men to marry them. It's no wonder that we find that child rates, you know, birth rates are going down because that's huge pressure, isn't it? So let's discuss that, Grace, and see how that maybe impacts the Philippines and what we should be grateful about when we're thinking about marrying a Philippine woman. So Grace, I mean, spending all that kind of money and putting all that kind of pressure on a relationship when it's just about to start, it can't be good, surely. No. And this is what the Chinese women are expecting of the Chinese men or anybody that wants to marry a Chinese person. This is what I saw. It, and they actually interviewed quite a few women, young women, that are really in their mind saying, I don't want anybody unless he comes up with this kind of money. And it's not a little bit of money, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And houses, and cars, and, and all the rest. That's what they are wanting. So, how does this kind of thinking work with the Philippines? You know, is there any kind of expectations in the Philippines, Grace, that your parents put upon you? like who to marry and how much they expect to get out of this? The answer is no. Nothing? <laughs> Nothing. No expectation at no. all? No. Okay. It's quite interesting because, you know, this thinking is, is not like just common to what I'm reading now about China. In Africa, yeah, it's actually part of their tradition. Is it? That you've got to pay labola, like what's, a dowry. What's labola? It's a dowry. It, it's you've got to pay this to the parents, and it's something negotiated by the relatives, not even by the parents. Wow. And so, if you, for instance, were a black woman, and you wanted to to marry me, or I wanted to marry you, yeah. You know, I can't even come into negotiations with you. I can't even talk to you about marriage. I first have to go and speak to your relatives, like an uncle. And then they get together a delegation and they come and speak to my delegation and they negotiate. So they look at a few things. They look at maybe what kind of wealth has this prospective husband got. And also they look at what you've got. What do you bring to the table? Maybe if you're a, you know, come with some degree, if you're a teacher or a doctor, wow, then the money just goes sky high. But it, it doesn't start of even small. So just for the normal labor type guy he would have to cough up like three or four cows Ouch. cattle so in this country you can say a cow is about 10,000 rand so he needs to come up with say minimum of 50,000 rand yeah. to think about just marrying just a, a, a plain normal village girl now it's not really affordable hey no now, they wonder why these women run away with these guys or these illegitimate children and things like that, eh? Because a lot of this is just a bit like greed, isn't it? Really? I mean, how do they expect that person to, to come up with that kind of money? He's fallen in love with this village girl. He's a village guy himself. So, this kind of idea has been around for a long time. Now, there were some safeguards with it. Um, I'm quite, I quite like it because... If you pay that money, you, let's say you work, you know, very hard and you come up with all that money. 
that money means that you can take this woman, all right? You can marry her and everybody's happy within the community. And she has to stay with you. So the minute she starts messing about or is not happy with you, you know what they have to do? What? They have to pay back all those cows. <laughs> really? So they're not going to want to do that. So, you know, many problems in family life come from the family, don't they? Where she goes and maybe talks to her mother about a problem in the marriage or her sister or whoever. And they gang up on the husband. And then at the end of the day, there's this huge strain. Well, that doesn't happen in the African <laughs> in the African uh, situation. Because if the relatives make a mess up and he has to send that woman back to them, he, they've got to repay him, all those, all those cows. So in that sense, you know, relatives, they stay out of any marital situation because that woman now is paid for. She's, she's gone. She's... <laughs> So, you know, in some way there's a safeguard, in other ways it's, it's quite dangerous, I would think. Um, so, I'm not saying I'm in favor of it, don't get me wrong. Um, but at least it's like a one-off payment. So, you're not like having to think of paying for her family forever. Yeah. It's, it's done and dusted, you've paid the price and it's over. So, that, there's another nice point to it. It's not like in the future you have to keep on paying. But, you know, even Grace, in our culture... Um, Although there's never really been, to my knowledge, I mean, I suppose in some, some European cultures there is, but I've never known about it, is that, you know, you can marry who, who you want. Mm. And there is no money up front. But having said that, there is still a bit like a caste system. I mean, like even with Billy Joel, you know, he, he sung about that uptown girl. You know, there, there's some women that you can't go after because they're out of your league. Because their family maybe come from very wealthy businesses or politicians or whatever the case may be or um, and you don't fit into that class or likewise you know you're looking at a woman but she's like what we call the other side of the railway tracks meaning she's not your class she's lower but you know you've met her you've loved her you want to but your parents are saying no no <laughs> that's dangerous because you know they've got a different way of thinking i've got a different understanding and it could be a situation where there's, there's poverty and she just wants something out of the marriage. Mm. So, you know, your parents would probably say, don't go, don't go there. They want somebody more or less on your level. So basically, even in the European culture, there is these kind of levers mm. that um, parents pull to make sure that you get somebody that's more suitable or they feel is more suitable for you okay so there's no money exchanges but even before it happens because you know if you marry somebody for instance mm. and um, you know they they husbands w well off and they've got a lot of connections you benefit from all that networking yeah but now if you on the same level well he can benefit from your network so that joint um, kind of beneficiary of, of networks helps the marriage and helps that wealth to continue. So that's why people like to kind of marry in their own kind of bracket of earnings versus, you know, marrying somebody higher or somebody lower. Mm. Okay, so generally when you hear of somebody marrying higher, you always go in with the wrong motives. You say, oh, yeah, they're only doing it, not for love, they're doing it. It's a bit like what's, what people say about... Um, foreigners and, mm. and Filipinos you know they Filipinos are doing it for the wrong motive or even the foreigners are doing it for the wrong motive it's the same thing okay so coming back to the idea of the Filipino you say that there is no expectation no. at all all right although you say that there's expectation for people to help one another within the you know within the family if for instance there's sicknesses or or difficulties is that true or not um, maybe not, or maybe, <laughs> yes. I, I don't know for others, but for our family even, you know, if even someone had a sick, mm. or like, like my aunties, you know, they pass away, mm. then they need, really need, need our help. So that's it. Okay, so there's some, there's all some times when there's help needed and, yeah. and asked for, but it's not something that's, 
no. required. It's not, not something you have to do. It's something you're doing from your heart. Yeah. Because you want to help out. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is quite an important thought because I was just thinking, um, there's a lot of going out there that, you know, the foreigners are, are worse off for marrying Filipinas. But if you think about the starting point that we've benefited from, Imagine if you, if you were marrying a Chinese person and had to come up with a hundred thousand US just to to get her and have these cars and have these houses. Whereas in the Philippines, generally you you're just marrying, and you and you're taking that person and you you're caring and supporting for that person. You're not necessarily having to look after her family as such. There's no upfront cost. There might be gradual costs where there's help needed. Um, simple things, but there's no long-term expectation that every month we need to get this amount of money. Well, it's not in, in our case, is it? I mean, I think also it's, it's incumbent on the person that's looking to marry a, a, a Philippines woman to look at the family and the situation there. Make sure that there's no hidden costs, you know, mm. like maybe they're heavily in debt or there's somebody within the family that's maybe addicted to some kind of substance, knowing that, you know, there's going to be costs which relate to that, you know, to paying off those debts or, you know, there's addictions. The best idea would not to, to have an understanding of who you're actually marrying and the family as well. So that was quite fortunate. I mean, that's what I did with yourself, eh? Yeah. I mean, I knew by going there, that firstly, they have their own little business. So they are very, very active. They're hustling and bustling. They're doing what they have to do to earn money. Um, the next thing that's also important is that they're also part of our same ministry. And mm -hmm. that's their focus, which is our focus as well. So that's where they're putting their focus. They don't focus on, on money. You know, yeah. They don't need all the material extras that sometimes um, we find people wanting. You know, they have to have the house, they have to have the car. No, no, that's not how we view things. So they've got the same mindset. So that's that's also helpful, isn't it? All right, so we've benefited. And, and I also benefit a little bit because I'm even older than her parents. <laughs> and even their customary way of thinking is that they always look after the elderly. Yeah. So if I'm older, then surely they should be looking after me, not me looking after them. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's just what we thought we'll, we'll talk about today, is we can actually count ourselves fortunate that we're not marrying a Chinese person and have to have those big upfront costs, or even a, a, a black person, yeah, an Afri African, African person, who also expect upfront costs. And all the, the what's the word? The the hassles of having to deal with their relatives to negotiate these terms. We don't have to do any of those things. It's just a straightforward, if you love the girl, she wants to be your wife, mm -hmm. you can just go through, going through the documentation to, to take her as a wife. There's no other costs. So that, that's pretty good, other than obviously the marriage. So talk about the marriage quickly. What's, what's expected at the wedding, for instance? I mean, firstly, I didn't want to marry in the Philippines. I wanted to bring Grace to Africa and marry her here because that would have been easier for us to get our documentation. But she was adamant she wanted to be married in the Philippines because that's, you know, all her family is going to be there. But what was the expectations for that wedding? Who was to pay? Um, when, uh, if you are a man, and then wanted to marry that beautiful woman that you get. <laughs> the man also had um uh, side to pay all the like um bride gown and also the suit for his own when they have when they um wedding you know wedding special wedding mm -hmm. and then the dress of bridesmaid and groomsmen but the food and the vineyard they working together okay so, so that's 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 the normal traditional way. That's not the way we did. I paid for basically everything, hey. Yeah. So I paid for the venue. I paid for the food. I didn't pay for the 
bride's dresses, did I? No. How come that didn't happen? Because when the day before Jonathan's um, go there in Philippines, I told to them, our bridesmen and groomsmen, that they need to have a, um, what we call it, a gown dress for her as a bridesmaid and groomsmen. Okay, so, so you organized that before. Yeah. And they were all prepared to do that, hey? Yeah. Because it's quite a privilege to be a bridesmaid and a groomsman, hey? They all, yeah. they all want to do it. So they funded that themselves, which is, I only learned about this afterwards. I felt quite bad about it. But the next problem was they had so many. How many did you have? We got, before we got eight bridesmaids. Eight. Yeah. And now, when we're having a, a wedding celebration, we got four bridesmaids. Mm. Because some of them, they can't afford to buy a dress. Oh, goodness, Grace. Okay, now you tell me. Now I feel bad. <laughs> okay, I'm sure there was more than four, though. There no, was... it's four. You had four? And then yeah. you had your bride, your maid of honor. That was five. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so, so we've discussed that. And I'm just very grateful that I didn't have any upfront costs with Grace. I am actually wonder if there is up cost, if there was ever a upfront cost, how many people would actually go for it? Because I don't know if I would. Mm. I, I don't agree with it. I mean, from a biblical point of view, um, I don't think that's, taught really in the Bible. I know dowry was mentioned in the Bible, but I think for Christians, obviously, it's, and, and I think also the way the legal system is geared today, whereby, you know, if there's any problem, any stress in the marriage and there is a divorce, that the woman does get a payout anyway, mm. unless it's like pre-nap and it's all been um, pre, pre-organized. So there is kind of um, what's a protection than there wasn't maybe in biblical days for women. So that dowry, you know, was a help. Mm. But I think in, in today's thinking, you know, from a biblical point of view, I don't think it's right. You know, if, if you love somebody and you, you can marry that person, but there again, it depends on the ages and so forth because, you know, parents do play a big role. I know, I mean, I've, I've had two children that have been married and I can't really say that I agreed with their marriages, but, you know, you accept it and you don't benefit from it. You might think long term you hope to benefit. You're going to have some grandchildren and, you know, maybe in your old age, you're going to have, they're going to, you know, pop in and see you in old age mm -hmm. home. <laughs> but that's about the, the end all of, of how you're going to benefit. So anyway, we've come to the end of that. And we, if you've enjoyed what you've seen. Could you um, subscribe? Subscribe and also like and comment. <laughs> All right, we appreciate that, guys. It's good to see our subscribers going going up, and we try to answer anybody that wants, you know, has a question or doesn't understand something or wants to query what we've said. And whatever we've said is just really our own opinion. It's 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 nothing is written in stone yeah <laughs> yeah it's, and also we would like to say thank you to our commenters <laughs> yeah even they say positive or sometimes negative but that's our own opinion and our own experience yeah so we hear because we would like to experience and share our you know experience in philippines that experience here when I'm living here in South Africa. Yeah. And so far, are you enjoying it in South Africa? Yeah. But my thinking is there in Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. It's in the DNA. It's, yeah. We've got to try and fix her thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, keep well. Thank see you so much. Bye. Bye.